Welcome to Next to Madison, a podcast to help you live your best life. Hey, welcome back to another episode of Next to Madison. I am your host, Madison Malloy. This is episode 197. And on this episode, we are covering uh, the how to have an unbreakable mindset along with fitness and nutrition, uh, which leads to an unbreakable mindset. So I've got a great guest on with me today to talk about this. He is uh, coaches, uh, primarily men, but he also has tips for women um, to create this amazing life for themselves, which leads, which basically starts with with having a, a positive mindset. So I am sitting down with, uh, he goes by the Level Up Dad. Uh, his name's Patrick Tromley. And- hey, it's Madison Malloy. I'm excited to announce that my new book, Time to Lighten the Fuck Up, is now available online and in stores. You can pick up your copy today by going to Amazon or barnesandnoble.com. This new book is a humorous self-help guide to help you remove the obstacles that are holding you back so you can take things less seriously and live a more enjoyable life. I'm so excited for you to read it. Now back to the show. Welcome back. We are with our guest on this amazing episode of Next to Madison. We are talking on breakable mindsets. Yes, your mindset determines your life. If you don't like what your life looks like, it's probably because there's something in your mindset that's determining it. If you like the way your mind, your life is, you probably have a good mindset, but we always want more because that's just human nature. So on this episode, uh, we have got the level up dad, Patrick Tromley with us. How are you? I'm doing well. How about you? Good. I'm so excited you're, you're on this and I love this topic. Um, because obviously I love the self-help personal development space and this is right in there. Um, so first get into like what you do and kind of your program, and then we'll kind of go into tips for creating an unbreakable mindset. Sure. So what we do is we leverage nutrition and fitness as tools to build that unbreakable mindset that you mentioned. We'll set up daily non-negotiable tasks that we must execute without fail. Mm -hmm. And by doing that day after day. You win the days, then you win the weeks, and you build that momentum, and you end up having the success that you've been looking for. So it all comes, like you said, it's all about mindset and making sure that you're consistent and building those those winning days. Okay, I love that. So you mentioned nutrition and, and fitness. So are, yeah. you feel that those are critical elements to lead to having an unbreakable mindset? Absolutely, absolutely. The The external appearance is really a reflection of your internal state. So if you're a mess in your head and you're not on track and you're not on point, it's going to reflect outwardly in your appearance. Either you're out of shape, you're unhealthy, whatever it might be, but it is a direct reflection of how you are internally. So by using fitness and by using nutrition, specifically, you know, tracking your macros, having a set macros for your goal, and then hitting those every day the restriction of not going crazy and eating whatever you want, it helps you get through those harder, harder times because you've already put yourself through that with the restriction on your diet. Then obviously when you go into the workouts, it builds that consistency, that mindset where, you know, you can do the hard things because you've gotten up. I, I personally, I get up at three 30 every morning. I work out. I do my, my Bible <laughs> study. I do my, it is, it's a relatively new thing at that hour. Um, well, probably about six weeks now, uh, but I've always gotten up early. But by doing that, it, it sets the, the tone of your morning, sets the tone of your day, right? So I get up at 3.30, yeah. I have my coffee, I read my Bible, I do my meditations, do my journaling, my gratitudes, and then I go right into the workout. So in about an hour, hour and a half from waking up, I'm working out and I count all those as stacking my wins, right? Those are part of my daily non-negotiables. So by doing that, it sets my mindset ready to essentially just to smash everything else that I have to that day. Right. I'm, I'm in that mindset. I've been winning already. And it's now it's six 30. I've been up longer than most people already. And I've already <laughs> won a bunch. Right. So by doing that, I'm starting the day winning when they're just getting up. So what time are you going to bed? Uh, not as early as I would like. It's been about 11, 10 30, 11 o'clock. Uh, okay, that's I, not I enough have, sleep. That's not it, enough sleep. You know, it, it helps off. It also helps me with the mindset because it is hard to get up at three 30 when I'm going to bed at 10 30. It it's challenging myself to continually hit those non-negotiables. 
I would prefer a little bit more sleep. I'd like to be in bed by 930, but I have three kids. So, oh. you know, that doesn't always work out as we want. Um, but again, it's it makes it harder for me to get up in the morning, which I think is a good thing because it makes my mind stronger. And that's that's what it is at the end of the day. I like that because it is easy to hit the snooze button. And I've, I've been guilty of that. I've said, OK, I'm going to get up at five o'clock and I'm going to do a gratitude journal and I'm going to work out. And then if for some reason I wake up at two or three and my mind is spinning, I'm like, well, I need the sleep. I'll do the workout later. And then yeah. what happens is sometimes the workout gets messed. So yeah. I think it's no matter what, how tired you are, the consistency, you know, and I always think when you're really tired and you have to get up and you didn't sleep well, you'll sleep better that night because you're exhausted. Yeah, you will. And you can counterbalance that, right? By trying to go to bed earlier the, the following day. But like you said, it's it's that challenge of being consistent with hitting that wake up, regardless of how well you slept. You know, with our kids, sometimes our kids run into the bed in the middle of the night. Yeah. Getting that disturbed, that sleep disturbed is going to happen. Right. But that's not going to stop me from getting what I need to get done. Getting yeah. It done. I love that's, that. I think that I think all falls that, back to the mindset. Yeah. No, I, I, I think that that's really important what you said too because people think like oh mindset okay how am I thinking um am I thinking positive am I having negative thoughts am I switching up but really it's everything contributes to that mindset of also like consistency of having a strong morning routine sticking to your goals even if they're as little as making your bed or doing your gratitude and 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 I've had a lot of people on the podcast who always talk about gratitude and a lot of people recently have talked about the importance of a gratitude journal. And even if like you can't journal because you're like, ah, you can just at least get up and state three things you're thankful for. Exactly, right? Get a piece of paper and just write them down or in your phone even, right? You could type the note in your phone that, hey, these are the three things that I'm grateful for today. Yeah, because it it does, it does make a difference. And the other thing too, with, with mindset, um, you know, I'm, I'm kind of in a place where I'm like, ah, like, is, is this happening? Is this? And um, I think it's also like, preparing yourself living in that goal to right. of like whatever you want to achieve so if you are doing let's say a television appearance it's making your fitness and nutrition a priority i i stated in my book um you know you should live your life you should always be ready for the biggest day of your life right. so you should always be in in the best shape you can be look the way you want like be prepared I always say like, it's good to be prepared to take a photo shoot every day. And then you're always ready because you're not delaying this process. So for me, like I was waiting for something and I, where I had to travel. So I packed my toiletry. I put in a certain amount of like, you know, underwear um, into a bag and certain things. So it's kind of like I was ready. Sure. Telling the universe kind of you're ready. Um, and, and we we like to focus on keeping to go along with that to to keep the long view in sight, right? Like you're gonna have hurdles, you're gonna have bumps through your process, but at the end of the day, you have this goal that you're ultimately trying to achieve. And if you lose sight of that goal, you will get pulled off track by the slightest thing. And it's it's the long view that keeps us going forward. The consistency with the long view and focus is going to keep you moving forward towards that goal. And like you said, you'll always be ready if you're looking that way, right? Like you keep that in mind, no matter what happens, you should be ready for some aspect of it, which won't catch you completely off guard. Well, exactly. And if you look good and you feel good, right, you're going to come off more confident and more things are going to come to you because, you know, exactly. we've all had those days where we feel like we look like crap. We're, we're you know, um, self-conscious. Right. And yeah, usually that day turns out to be a kind of crappy, but sometimes right. not. But it just depends it, on your attitude. Exactly right. Yeah. And and a lot of most of the time when I do my workouts, it sets it puts you in that flow state, right? So you got that prefrontal cortex flow and it generates a positive mental attitude. So we focus on that a lot. You even during the middle of the day, if you're starting to get a, you know, say two o'clock lull, you're getting dragged down a little bit, you're not feeling it. Go do a quick little pump workout. It doesn't have to be a full workout. Maybe just go do some burpees or some push-ups or sit-ups or whatever it is to get a blood flow going again. And you'll watch your mind shift instantly. As soon as you're done, you get the heavy breathing going and your brain, I don't know the physio- physiology behind it exactly, but your brain goes back into that that positive mental state and everything's good again because now you're focused and you have the flow going. 
I like that. So if you're anxious, drop and give me 20. Essentially, yeah. You know, like the military has it right on that aspect. Like if you're feeling any kind of way that's not the the highest vibration, you're not up here humming at the, the highest level, drop and give me 20. Do some sit-ups, do some push-ups, burpees, whatever it might be, but do some physical activity so that you can stimulate that positive mental state, yeah. that, that attitude that is looking for the good and looking how you can overcome versus dwelling in that negative situation or that negative vibe that you have at the time. I, I really like that because I had I had suggested to people and I did this myself, um, you know, when you and I need to do it again, um, when you go to the bathroom, if you're at work, you go to the bathroom and, you know, there's not a line or whatever you can drop and you can do like quick a quick 20, 20 squats, you know, there you go. right there. And I'm like, you'll have phenomenal butt. But I, I came at it with the phenomenal butt situation and the thought and not the wow, it actually helps you kind of get your blood pumping again and put you in a higher vibration right right the the butt is a, a side product of it right like that's a benefit <laughs> of it but the, the main thing is the the mental state and the attitude and just being able to keep the long view in mind really i mean you you get back into that flow state and you're good again just like you were in the morning after you finish your morning workout now you're back humming you're ready to go and, and take on whatever it is that, that comes at you I love, I love that. And, um, on your Instagram, which is great. You guys need to follow it. It's the level up dad. So go check that out. Um, you have some wonderful videos, beautiful family, by the way. Um, but one of your videos was finding your purpose. And I think this yeah. is so important. So I want you to kind of talk more on that because you, you stated it really well, like how you'll feel okay. you basically be in a higher vibration if you're living your purpose. So, so. It right. Right. And I think a, a lot of our issues, our anxieties are sometimes depression comes uh -huh. because we're not acting in alignment with our, our conscience or our calling 100%. and our conscience that, you know, that voice you hear inside your head that's saying, Hey, I should be, I should be working out or I should have gotten up or maybe I should have put my phone down and, and spent more direct time with my kids instead of scrolling Instagram or Facebook. It, <laughs> what it does is it oh, I just completely lost my train of thought so when you're living in your purpose you're depressed if you're Thank not you. living in your purpose right. you're not so, in alignment. yeah so when you're not in alignment you have that that anxiety that pull both ways but once you align your actions your actions with your thoughts and your purpose everything falls into place it's congruent and it's, it's really what I believe is your conscience is God calling you. God's telling you, this is what my plan is for you. Now, when you fall in line and you act according to God's plan, the blessings and the good come to you. Yes. So by acting in accordance, by doing your daily non-negotiables, you're falling in line with what your conscience is telling you to do, which in turn is your purpose. Okay. So for people that are listening, they might be saying, that sounds great. How do I find my purpose? listen to your conscience. It's, it's pretty simple. I mean, you, you have to do some introspection, right? Like you have to sit and, and think about what are you hearing? What are you feeling about stuff? And, and that's somewhat new for me is I wasn't a real big feeling guy, but over the last year or so I've, I've tapped into that more because my wife is super sensitive to that kind of stuff. So I wanted to get closer with her. Yeah. And so I've, I've tried to become more sensitive to that and it does take time, but once you kind of get a feel for it, it gets easier and you constantly look back or listen to yourself and it's going to, your conscience and God is going to tell you what you should be doing. Everybody's heard that little voice in their head when they're doing something they know they're not supposed to do. It's That's yes. And it's true. And so, so some people might be like, well, how do I know? Like I had suggested, and then th this was also in my book, like a, an exercise to help find your purpose or what you're excited about is like write down all the things that you would like to do um and then read them out loud and notice how yep. you feel because that feeling is usually when you get that excitement mm -hmm. is usually aligning with your purpose so exactly. if you're somebody who's listening and is like well what do you mean this voice or blah 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 I always say like, make a list of all the things like, do you want to have a clothing company? Do you want to be an influencer? Do you want to be an author? Do you want to be a top executive at a Fortune 500? Like whatever it right. is. Uh, do you want to be a stay-at-home mom, stay-at-home dad, whatever, whatever gets you the most excited. That's probably, right. um, you're probably on that track. I know for yeah. me, because I've, I've been somebody who's been all over the map, suffered horrible anxiety. 
uh, which then led to depression. Um, and being able to like get out of that was when I was like, I was going with the flow and I started aligning with my purpose. I was doing exactly. things that I, I felt anxious about. I wasn't happy about it. didn't excite me. Mm-hmm. And even though that thing led to my purpose uh, and gave me preparation, um, I feel a lot more calm now that I'm feel I'm living my purpose, you know? Right. Yeah. You're in alignment. You're in alignment with it. And, yeah. and you said it, well, I think you said it very well is that, that excitement feeling when you do sit and you're doing that introspection and you think of what do I want to do? What are my goals? Like what, what, what should I, what excites me? Like you said, when you find it and you sit there and you say it out loud, you, it resonates, right? You're like, oh, okay, that, that is what I think that's where I want to go. And you pursue it. And so you align your actions with that thought and you test it out, right? Like anything else you test it and you, you keep working towards that. And when you are working in alignment, that feeling of excitement and and not pleasure but contentment that's the right word you feel content you know you're doing what you're supposed to be doing because it's in alignment with your goal or with your that excited feeling of that topic and you feel it in your heart right like it's here you're like okay i'm i'm doing good i'm doing what i'm supposed to be doing well and they are they're also saying that's the key ingredient the feeling part is the key ingredient to manifesting right You can't just say, you know, you can't just say, you know, um, what was I, you know, I am wealthy. I have a hundred million dollars in my bank account. That's great. You have to like feel that it's actually there. And what's it going to feel like when you look at your bank statement and you see those six zeros there, it's like, yeah, it will feel that exact. Exactly. That's why they, you know, in the secret, they said, write the $10 million check or whatever it is, your number, you know, so you can kind of physically see it in the excitement. Um, But yeah, it's the believing and the feeling because I've had a lot of things that I've tried to manifest before and the noise kind of comes in, you know, in the past. And now I'm like, wait a second, I wasn't feeling the excitement of having that thing. But I have talked about, and you're a God person as well, like, for me, the law of attraction didn't necessarily work. But when I started praying, it started to work. And I realized they're kind of similar. It's believing in something you cannot see. But for some reason, asking God for it, saying, God, you know, please uh, open these doors if it's meant for, for on my you know path that you created for me. Right. I, I believe it. So mm-hmm. because I believe it, it typically happens. He creates it, right? Like that's that's exactly right. Yeah. So if you're you know, more of a universe person, you can use the law of attraction or God, mm-hmm. but that's just something that helped me kind of get in tune with that, you know. Absolutely. And some people say like the law of attraction is the universe, God is God. And I'm like, yeah, but God created the universe. So they're actually the same. You know what I mean? So yeah, everyone's gonna I have a different agree. opinion. It's it's <laughs> six of one, half dozen of another, right? If you don't want to call it God, okay. But like you said, it's pretty much the same I think oh exactly exactly so okay I do love that now I want to go um uh into when we we talk about nutrition you had mentioned macros yes I'm not doing macros and a lot of people aren't going to do macros but what I do do is I do a lot of protein now and heavy lifting so how do you can you give us I like to simplify things because I feel people are very busy and they won't accomplish something if it's too complicated so what are some tips um to kind of get into that nutrition level what uh, along with protein with supplements anything like that that they can simply follow and make the adjustments today both men and women sure so protein is, is king right you need to make sure that you're having sufficient protein most of the time we do not eat enough we're severely under underestimating the amount that we're intaking or taking in and the amount that we need. Um, That's why it is very important to speak with somebody that at least has an idea. I mean, you could research on Google as well, uh, but at least research. Okay. I, these are my goals, right? I want to either cut fat or I want to put on muscle, right? So depending on what your goals are, it's going to determine how much of each of the macronutrients you should have. And when you say macronutrients, just explain that because some people... Sure. So ma- there's the three main macronutrients. There's protein, carbs, and fat. Okay, so Protein is king. And the great thing with protein is it the body will never convert it to fat. So you can, quote unquote, overeat protein, but 
but your body's not going to retain it. It's not going to go to that waistline or, or to the back of your arms or wherever. That's, that's mm -hmm. something that I think a lot of people aren't aware of is that it. Okay. So I like that. Cause I was not aware of that. What are those protein sources that don't go to your waistline? Any protein. But what about like, I have a new addiction, the um, blue diamond, salt and vinegar almonds. Okay. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, those <laughs> are good. I ate a whole can yesterday and it was like <laughs> 600 calories, but it was five servings. So I got 30 grams of protein, but sure. that's going to go to my waistline, right? Well, it's not the protein that's going to go to the waistline. It's the fat in the nuts that are going to go to your waistline. So a lot of times it's okay. it's what's being eaten with the protein on top of the protein that gets stored. At the end of the day, it gaining or losing weight is simple math. It's calories in versus calories out, right? So are you burning more than you're taking in? If yes, then you're going to lose weight. If you're not burning more than you're taking in, if you're eating more than you burn, you're going to gain weight. It, well, it, exactly. That Pretty reminds simple. me, I got to get my that's... Apple Watch synced. Right, right. I haven't worn it forever. <laughs> I think a lot of people get intimidated by that you know the weight loss and making sure i'm eating the right it, it needs to be simplified like you said for people calories in versus calories out are you burning more than you're taking in most people have a goal of, of fat loss right because all of us have gotten soft at certain times yeah we want to to shape it up and, and and look good on the beach yeah you need to make sure that that you're burning more right at, at the end of the day either burn more or eat less so that you're in a negative or a deficit when it comes well, to and i always tell people too like more weightlifting, less cardio, because the more muscle you have, the more you can eat. I always say I only lift weights so I can eat. That's yeah. And, and muscle, typically muscle is going to take more, uh, more calories in to maintain that muscle. So if you carry around more muscle, you can, like you said, you can eat more because you have to the muscle, it, it, it just takes it to move around, right? Like it's the energy source for the more muscle mass you have, you need more energy to move it. So it, it gives you some more leeway if you do have more mass. Another thing with muscle is as you get older, you're less likely to suffer injuries from falls, from yeah. those kinds of things as, as we get older, right? People fall, break their hip, that kind of stuff. If you maintain muscle mass later in life, it will lead to better health, longer health, uh, longer lifespan, less injuries. Like I said, mentioned falling. Um, there's there's nothing wrong with having muscle. It's oh, it's, it's, it's and it's very hard to get as big as everybody thinks you can get. Like some, I know some people are like, oh, I don't want to lift because I don't want to get bulky. You're not. If it, were that, <laughs> if it were that easy to get huge and, and big old monsters looking, there'd be a lot more guys walking around like that. It's it's not easy to get that big. It takes years of dedication, years of of um, of maintaining not only your nutrition but hitting the workouts, the consistency in order yeah. to to build a physique that could compete. Let's say so for the general public, lifting weights I, I highly recommend. I do cardio maybe twice a week, but what I do is I take shorter rest periods in between the lifting sets, which keeps the heart rate elevated. So it's not technically cardio, but it still keeps your heart rate elevated, which is the intent yeah. of cardio anyway. So, so what are you, what is your typical break time? Is it 60 seconds between sets? When you're yeah, about 60, it could be as low as 30 seconds up to 90 seconds on the bigger, like compound lifts, you know, where you're lifting either squats or deadlifts or something like that. That's really taxing on your system and your central nervous system. I'll take 90 seconds, but for the vast majority, it'll be 45 to 60 seconds. Okay. Yeah. And that rest period is key too, but yeah, sure. you do, you, your heart rate does, if, but I always say like, don't just grab the weights and lift them. If you're not, I always, and, and tell me if I'm wrong. Um, if you're not struggling on the last three, the weight's not heavy enough. You want to be able to, that's called going to failure, right? So the, the closer you get to failure with each set, the more you're going to st stimulate the muscle growth. So yes, you should be, it shouldn't be like 20 easy reps where you can just do it like this and you're talking to your friend or you're scrolling yeah. on your phone at the same time. You want to be struggling where you can barely get that last one up, or maybe you're, you're falling short because then you've hit that failure point and that's, ideal for stimulating the muscle growth okay perfect perfect you i hit it on that. the head there um and then what uh supplements do you recommend that people need to be taking like and like non-negotiable supplements every day 
The only supplement that I take other than like whey, some people consider whey protein a supplement. So I would definitely mention that. That's huge. I consume a lot of that. Um, like I said, protein is king. Mm -hmm. And then the other one I take is creatine. And those are the main two that I take. You could throw in a multivitamin. Those are always good. But if you're eating a well-balanced diet, you get greens, you got your protein, you get some carbs and fat. Most of the time you're going to be able to pull the, the needed vitamins from your food itself. But if you have a specific diet that you, you follow, you may not be able to. So supplementing with the multivitamin is always a good idea in those cases. Yeah, totally. Okay. So now that you, once you've mastered the nutrition and the fitness, which is going to help to, with the healthy mindset, what are right. some trip tips and tricks that people can do to get into a winning, let's call it a winning mindset. Winning An unbreakable mindset. mindset. There we go. Sure. It comes down to the non-negotiables. You need to, one, you set your main goal, right? I want to do X. Then you you align your actions with that. So you'll set up maybe, depending on what your goal is. For me, I'm in a, a cut phase, right? So I want to get down to about 9% body fat. Oh, wow. So my, my diet restrictions are one of my non-negotiables, right? I can't eat chips. I can't eat certain things because it's not going to help me get to where I want to be. It, the workouts are essential, the morning ritual. I, I'm a big believer in the morning ritual because like I said earlier, the, the tone of your morning sets the tone of your day. Yeah. So when you have that bad morning and, and there's been a couple of times where I've overslept, you know, I've slept an hour past my alarm clock and wake up with that adrenaline rush and ready to go. But I get right back into my morning ritual at that point, because I know that's going to set the rest of the day up for my flow state, my positive mental attitude and me progressing towards the goal that I have in, in my long view. So my big thing is the non-negotiables stay true and do not miss your daily non-negotiables and you will make the progress that you need to, to getting towards your goal. Okay. And that, and, and, and meeting your goals creates that unbreakable mindset. Right. Exactly. It's, it's that daily completion of your non-negotiables. If trains your mind to think, Hey, I can do this, right? I, I got up at three 30. I worked out at five. I was done yeah. by six 30, yeah. made breakfast for the kids by seven o'clock. I've already done probably eight, nine things before seven o'clock in the morning. And when you do that consistently, when there's stuff that comes up, that's not planned or something that's hard for you to deal with, you already know, because you've done your stuff for days, weeks, months on end, you already know that okay, well, this, this may not be ideal, but I can get through it because I did all this other stuff already. I know my mind had been trained to overcome those kinds of things. Yeah. I like that. I like that. Yeah. And I like what you said too, of set your main goal and then write down the actions. Right. And that's, that. that's essential, that's right? Like you can't, you can't get to a destination without having a roadmap. So the non-negotiables, yeah. those little steps are your roadmap, your waypoints on getting to your destination. Yeah. And, it, and in return, it's going to build your confidence, which is part right. of that. Part of exactly. That. Those, those wins, that constant winning, it trains your mind that I can do this. I'm confident. It, it builds that confidence because you are constantly winning. Yeah. They may be little battles, right? But the little stuff adds up. The more and more you can, you're consistent with it and you continue to do it, the stronger your mind gets because you've trained it to be in that winning mindset it it yeah. you can't help it really you can't because this is just now you become this person who's so determined and so disciplined to your rituals and to your your uh, daily non-negotiables that it just is what it is right this is what i do so i will get this done and if something comes up well guess what i know i can get it done because i do all this other stuff every single day yeah I very well said. So the other thing I want to talk about is, um, and you have one of the videos on your Instagram too, that I think is important because it goes with when you're building this unbreakable mindset and reaching your goals. Um, there's always something, there's always something slightly out in the future, right? To a long range goal. And then people want to hit that goal. But the whole thing of I'll be happy when is also very dangerous. So you can't say I'll be happy when I attain this goal. So right. what are your tips to being happy now? Because when you're happy now, you're going to be happier when you do. Sure. Sure. So like, let's uh, go. Again, I, I may sound like a broken record here, but <laughs> it all comes back to those daily wins, right? Like okay. you enjoy the process, you enjoy the work. And the more you're consistent with it, 
let's take working out, for example, the more you're consistent with your diet and working out, you're going to see the external changes in your body, right? You're going to see that maybe your waistline is getting a little tighter. Your for the guys, your shoulders are getting a little rounder and you get starting to get some, some pecs going on, maybe a little bicep pain or here and there. That is enough to keep you going. It gets you excited about it. You're like, okay, the work I'm putting in, I see the results. Yeah. And by doing that, like, again, the consistency with doing that produces those results. And the consistency with doing that produces that positive mental attitude and that that winning mindset because you're like, okay, I'm doing this. I see the results. You end up falling in love with the work because you know it's going to generate the results you want. Yeah. And not only does it apply to working out, but that leads out to every area of your life, every other aspect from work to family to church, whatever it might be. You just, you can do it because you know, right? You've done it. And it it instills that that value in the work. The worth is in the work. That's where you generate your worth is by putting in the work and overcoming and being consistent and being disciplined to your daily non-negotiables. Excellent. Yes. And being happy, having a purpose helps you be happy. Having a goal right. helps you be happy. Um, <clears throat> I had, had heard this interesting thing on the radio and they said, um, having this over the age of 80 will help you live much longer. And people are like, pacemaker? And they're like, no, a job. And the job is the purpose. Yeah, exactly. I think a lot of people retire. They they work their whole lives and they retire and then they drop dead within like two or three years yeah. right? because right. they lost their purpose, the, the schedule right. of getting up, the purpose. So I always say, I think it's important to never retire, slow down to do the things you love, but always have some sort of work. Maybe it doesn't have to be going to your job, but you could create a side hustle, um, go volunteer. Yeah. It's, it's that, it's, it's that purpose, which well, leads to that thing. Yeah. And, and God created us to work, right? I mean, that's one of our main purposes as humans yeah. is to, to do good works. So yeah, absolutely. maybe you do retire from your job, but like you said, then you can go do something else, right? You can go volunteer and yeah. still put in work there, or you can mentor people and help them. You know, you're putting in work and growing the, the, the new leaders of, of our country, whatever it might be, but you're, you're still putting in that work, which is going to generate that value, right? That worth within your side comes from the work that you put out and the work that you're doing. Amen. Very well said. I think, I think this was great. So where can uh, people find you? Find me on Instagram at the level up dad. And do you have a website? Anything uh, like no, not yet, but we will. Uh, okay. it's, it's in the works right now, but uh, the main thing I, I post multiple times to my stories on Instagram, document my daily habits. So as, as to be an inspiration to show people what they can do, that it is possible yeah. Again, it's not easy, but then again, the if you do easy things, you're not going to have that that value inside because it, like I said, it comes from the work, the hard work, especially when you you complete those tasks, you complete those jobs, you feel good about yourself, and I think we've all experienced that, right? So yeah. by doing that, it's it's it, it gives me joy to try and inspire people, and I've I've had huge outpouring of support and messages. People saying, "You know what? You're you're inspiring me to do this. I'm working out." I got a message from my barber actually yesterday saying, "Hey, I've been up for three weeks straight at five thirty to work out," and he had it. never done that. And so it's it for me, it's awesome. And this is one of the first times where I find real joy in in my work. Um, I've always been about helping people. I was in lending for 20 something years, helping people buy homes mm -hmm. um, and investing, helping people in rough situations in real estate. Uh, but now this, this for me is, is my purpose. I've found it after what I'm, I just turned 39. So I found it after 21 years of being an adult, but I get joy. Like I get so much joy from helping these people. It, it not only does it change their life, it changes the life of their spouse, their children, the people they work with because they become this strong, confident person and it allows them to be leaders. It allows them to fulfill their duties and their roles and responsibilities. And it just, you see the trickle down effect. They become better fathers or better wives or better husbands, uh, better mothers. And it's just, honestly, I, like I said, I, I found my purpose in this and I just want to help thousands of people as many as I can better themselves and, and better their lives through through putting in the work and, and becoming aligned with their purpose.
Oh, I love it. Very well said. So yeah, you guys go check out the level up dad on Instagram. He's got probably a website coming soon, but you can reach him there. Uh, get tips, tricks, sign up for his coaching program, all that good stuff. And, uh, thank you all for tuning into another episode of next to Madison. And we will see you next time to find out who's next. Hey, your host here, Madison Malloy. Please make sure to subscribe to the show on all podcast platforms and please rate and review us on iTunes and Spotify. Also, if you have any questions or comments, you can email us at contact at next to Madison.com. I thank you again for listening. Bye.